Hey, welcome back to Ravenhawk Tech. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a intro video to networking and VMware. Wait, that sounds familiar. Oh wait, I had done one before, but the audio quality of it kind of stank. Um, audio quality, no, 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 the audio quality was actually not that bad. Well, anyway, the video quality really was poor. Uh, so new camera, new software, new processes, ta-da, let's go again. So in this environment where we're dealing with the Dell R610, I am running VMware 6.5 on that. I have two 6.7 VMs that I'm gonna be configuring for a later project. And I'm gonna run you through configuring the IP addresses on them. So let me switch here. All right. So here's what I got going on. Host one I have already configured. Uh, if you go into the console, you'll notice that I have an IP address window standing up here. Or there we go. You'll have an IP address here of 6610. Um, my other VM, which I'm going to configure, which is two, I'm going to open my console. Now I'm running Firefox, and if you guys use VMware, you'll probably know of the little glitchy bug that it tends to repeat characters in the console. Um, there's a couple fixes. Uh, so far, I've tried majority of them, and uh, yeah, anyway. So I'm going to go a little slow in typing just to make sure I don't mess up things. As you can see, I just hit one key, and it hit twice. So... There we go. All right, F2 to get into the actual system customization. Now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna hit configure management network. And just to make sure I'm using the right network adapters, I have two, one of them is going to be for later on uh, for configuring HA and the primary one is VMNIC1. So go ahead and hit enter on that. I am not gonna configure a VLAN for this setup so there pretty much I can move ahead my IP address as you saw before I'm using 66 as my third octet so I'm gonna actually do 12 as my next IP address now you go hey wait 10 was your last one well 10 skip one just in case I need it and then 12 so it's just a little way that I do it but it leaves me an opening in case I need to put in something like, uh, for example, if I wanted uh, 11 to be the other interface, for example, which is what's going to end up happening. All right, and then I put my gateway. Like I said, this multiple tap thing is for the birds. I'm going to disable IPv6, which is going to re require a restart of the host once I'm done here. DNS configuration, I'm going to go ahead and set it to use my router. And that is so I can set a static host name in the DNS entry. And then I'm just going to call this one ESXIO2. And then I'm just going to give it a DNS, uh, custom DNS suffix. You don't have to do this. I do it just because and hit enter. All right. Now once that's done, you hit escape. You say yes to reboot the host and now we move to the next step. All right. The first thing you're going to see when you go ahead and go to your server's IP address is depending on the browser, you may see a little different verbiage. This is on Firefox, but it's going to say that your connection is not secure. That is because your server is using a self-signed certificate. What you're going to want to do is just go to Advanced, Add Exception, get the certificate, and Confirm. Once you do that, you'll be able to log in with your root and your password.
your username is root, your password is whatever you've set it to. Make sure you put in the right one. And of course, it's going to ask you most of the stuff it's asking you how to basically improve the uh, experience, which is the customer experience improvement program. Windows does the same thing. Uh, I don't join it because I'm not going to send my anonymous data. So I hit OK. And now you're in your base install of VMware. You'll notice if you go into networking, you have a VM network and a management network. So right this second, if I was to create a VM, it would attach to the VM network and it would basically go out the interfaces on this virtual switch, which is right here, the virtual switch zero. And that is currently using the same uplinks as your management interface. So if I was to edit it, you would see here for the next, if I go to Nick teaming, there's my VM NIC zero, which is what we selected at the beginning here. Now you can do interesting things. You can switch the NICs around. You can uh, do load balancing. There's different settings upon that, but those are all depending on what your case scenario will be. Um, you can also do something like, for example, I'm gonna set up a virtual machine and I want it to have a inter uh, network with absolutely no interfaces, just a local internal network. So you can do for um, like HA configs, such as failover, uh, mirror, database mirroring, things like that. So let's just say we're gonna go ahead and create a uh, internal network. I'm gonna, you can name it whatever you want. So I can say internal HA, um, FBI, CNBC, uh, BBC, whatever you want to end up calling it, just so you can identify it. You can also just go with the t uh, typical switch one. That way you're nice and fancy. It's V switch one. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just call it uh, HA network. Now I do not want an uplink. So you'll notice that right here, there's a little X that becomes visible once you move your mouse over it, click that, that removes the interface. And depending on your setup here, if you put a virtual router in place, um, you're gonna end up needing to make sure to have promiscuous MAC address changes and forge transmits for any internal network, or also if you have a router that is in your environment and communicates externally. Now. There's a huge additional section to that that can be brought up in later tutorials, but for right now, if you were just trying to create a uh, one hosted switch that basically could talk to anything internally, you don't actually need to turn on these. So for this, I'm just gonna say add as is, and there is my HA network. For port groups, I would go under here because you you can't just connect it to the switch itself. So I would call this one, um, let's just say my HA networks or my HA switch, um, say we're gonna have SQL mirror. We're gonna put that on my HA network. You can also throw in the VLAN ID and you can tell it to inherit from the V switch or say I needed this specific one to act differently. You can override the security settings. All right, now I have my SQL mirror port group. I have my virtual switch. And now if I was to create a VM, I could make use of both of these networks with no issues, um, depending of course on your config, but I, I don't wanna keep hitting you with the depending, 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 but there are criteria involved. <clears throat> the management network, if you wanna make any changes to that, if you edit it here, you're only gonna have the same information as you do for the other port groups. So you're gonna to have to go to the VM kernel NICs to make any adjustment to the management network. If you go into here, you'll notice that you get the option to do IPv4, IPv6, change the MTUs, you can do um, DHCP or static. Uh, you can expand upon that, tell it what type of services you're gonna be able to allow. 
if you do just have a basic license, you're not going to get all of these. You're not; those are services you need for vCenter and so forth. So you're not going to have those services. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit save, just because you know I didn't make any change. So I really don't have to save. I can hit cancel, but you know, you can also add in additional stacks. So like my default IP stack is for 66. Um, I can tell it that my provisioning is done on this IP address range, for example, and my VM uh, VMotion is done on this particular stack. So you can actually have it to where you can actually specifically target certain um, communication, certain IP addresses to certain areas, or you can do the same thing by adding in a new um, VM kernel and specifically put it to separate interfaces. So this is just the basics. Um, I mean, you can go into details. They do have some firewalls, but that's mostly for the server. Um, we'll skip that for now. But you got the basics of port groups, virtual switches. The physical interfaces are the ones on the system. Um, the VM kernels and TCIP stacks. That's what you need for the absolute bare minimum basic. I'm just going to start using uh, VMware ESXi and that's it. All right. I will be covering more of the intricacies of each of the different sections as it relates to different parts of increasing this setup. So we will go into the uh, additional things such as custom uh, port groups with VLANing and stacking in a certain way, um, the ability to do distributed switches once we get into having vCenter installed, and some other additional steps here. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, things you'd like to see, go ahead and hit me down there, down at the comment section, or go to the community tab and hit some comments there, or even message me on Twitter. Uh, I do respond, um, so just feel free to leave me a message. Uh, also, I would definitely enjoy to see you again, so if you can hit the subscribe button, that'll uh, let you know. Well, it used to let you know, of course, but now you also have to hit the little bell icon. But generally, as a subscriber, you are on my list. You'll see my content. If you want to get notified whenever I post, you hit the bell icon. You know, comment. If you've been on YouTube for more than a day, less than a day, whatever, you know the drill. So, all right, guys, and it's been a pleasure. See you soon.